my name is Stacy Chalemi, and I'm a 20 times best-selling book author. I do coaching, and I'm also a um, nationwide speaker, and I de devoted my entire life uh, advocating for people with disabilities, and especially epilepsy, because I have epilepsy myself. Um, I also, you know, try to really help people, um, you know, and I'm always here to help others. So please, if you have any questions, I love interaction. I love to help and don't be embarrassed to ask questions. No question is stupid. Every question matters and your, that question being answered could actually help you and help someone in the room that's too embarrassed to ask it. So please do. So the first few questions I have are just for general to each of you. We just give a couple, and then I have some pretty good questions for each of you. So, um, to start off, what are some barriers or challenges that still exist or may exist um, that you see that people have with disabilities have to work with every day? So we're going to get a little deep on this one. Okay. I feel like some of the big challenges that we as a person as a, with a disability um, struggle with is one of the big main things is, um, is stigmatism in, in the United States. There is a lot of labelizing and there is a lot of people who are afraid to actually say I have a disability, I'm struggling with a certain illness or a chronic illness because they don't want to be labelized because immediately people in our society have you know, think has a label in their head, and then they think that they, you know, this person can't be as as adequate as the next person because you know, they have this disability or that disability when they're just as good as everybody else. I think there is a lack of education, and people have to really um, well educate our society about different disabilities that are not actually in the media every day. There are more disabilities in the in the media talked about than others. And really, every disability, every chronic illness should have a fair share, and people should be well educated, especially in the school systems. I feel, I feel in the school systems, we lack the education that we need for teachers, administration, principals, vice principal. I don't think they're well equipped. From what I've seen in my own experience in life, they when they have a hard time understanding how to deal with each child that has a disability and they have to understand that there's not a, a standard way of treating these children because every child is different and there is a certain way of dealing with the situation speaking to the child and they have to be educated better in this field may i, may I add to that please i think also one last point i'd like to make um, when she just mentioned that, it came to my mind, is that having an invisible disability, a lot of people don't realize, you, you know, there's a lot of people with disabilities that you, you don't realize that person has a disability because they look fine on the outside, but they're struggling with a lot, of, a lot of different things on the inside. And I think we need to really get across, you know, in the media and on, even on TV, they should do small segments and explain that we need to have more self-respect for people. The lack of respect that you see in our, in our United States and many different instances, I feel, have increased. People are human beings, and each person needs to be treated with respect. Because you never know who you're speaking to, and you never know how it's going to affect that individual. For instance, there has been suicides due to the media because people have badgered other children and have made fun of them, and it led them to depression and then suicide. We need to really explain to other children to adults that words matter and how words can have an impact on people's lives. And that even the, the power of the words of wisdom is a powerful tool. Even looking at somebody that you don't know and say, hi, you know, wow, that was a great job. Oh, you look very pretty today. You could really turn a person's life around. You could actually make a person feel good about themselves and boost their self-esteem. Let's get rid of the hatred and let's explain to people that hatred is a bad thing Self-respect is a good thing, and show them how to exemplify that self-respect to others. Wow, thank you. You guys just knocked out those other four questions. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to ask some unique questions, because you did talk about what we'd like to see in the future, which is what we just talked about. We did talk about who we want to reach out to. So those questions have been answered. So Stacy, um, you know, personally and professionally, what is something that you would have a problem 
jobs that not only benefit individuals with your disability, but others in the community. So having epilepsy, um, one of the things that um, started me was that I, um, I had, uh, was having a hard time dealing with my epilepsy. So what I did was is I contacted the Epilepsy Foundation and I asked them to publish an article in their magazine. And I reached out and said, how do you help, how do you get through life with a disability? How do you get through life with epilepsy? And to my surprise, three to four hundred letters came to my house with people with inspiring stories. And I applied a lot of those to my life and it changed my life. So then I wrote, I started writing in a journal. And that journal led to me writing a book. And then I asked these people if I could take their stories and incorporate it in my book and they said yes. Now, I, through that, one of the things that really, that, those letters helped me. Those letters got me to the point where I am today. The Epilepsy Foundation publishing that article and being nice enough to put it in that magazine helped me. And then having, having their people in their organization reach out to me and help me with different ways of coping mechanisms helped me. So when I published that book, I got emails from people all over the place. But the one email that stuck in my head forever was the one email when they said I was on the verge of suicide I, had, I was in a motorcycle accident, I hit my head, and I got epilepsy, I lost my job, I can no longer be the, the supporter of my household, I can't go anywhere because I can't drive anymore, I feel useless, and I wanted to kill myself. And I got your book in Barnes & Noble, I read it, I follow your regiment, and it saved my life. And at that moment, I realized how powerful the words of wisdom can be. And I realized that, you know, all the things that when I got out of college, college, I had all these great dreams, you know, as everybody does when we're young kids. And I realized then that life is, is more than that. Life is not materialistic. Life is about helping others. And I found my purpose in life. And I, I devoted my entire life to helping others because I feel that you, just by sharing verbally or on paper, anyway, can impact another person's life. And so I feel, I feel like, you know, that was one of the things that actually turned my life around is by other people coming out of the woodwork to help me, and then I got better, helped others, and I actually saved people, saved a person's life. And the feeling of accomplishment was unbearable. Like, that's my motivator. When it's just being able to help others makes me feel good as a person. And that's what drove me, for one. You all have wonderful qualities about yourself. Nobody is perfect. They're, I hate that word because it doesn't, it doesn't exist. It's just a word that is non-existent. Uh, it's not true. Everybody has something. And you, when you look next to the person next to you, they, can have, they have a story to tell. And remember that everybody has something. Nobody's perfect. And never compare yourself to the person next to you or try to compare yourself to somebody else. Because even someone similar to you, they might be on level 33 and you might be just beginning it. And never compare yourself. All, what matters is what makes you happy, what makes you feel good as a person. And everybody in this room is number one. And everybody in this room is wonderful. And that's what you have to remember. <laughs>